So just really need to see what they do want to toss up here in conjunction. Lich Jug sounds nice. It's the spin with a Frost Armor. We've seen that a couple of times before. And that is something that somewhat deals with the Slaughter Phoenix land, as you mentioned. Um, spell immunity, again, going to be valuable. Not going to help you against the Bash of the Deeps, but Slaughter wouldn't be too keen to hit the Juggernaut while he's spinning anyway. No, that is absolutely true. Fnatic, 30 seconds left for their, uh, for their reserve time now. The fourth pick to be made, and they do go into the Morphling, so... Bringing out a bit more of an older carry, but it just never seems to go out of meta, this Morphling hero. So we do see it here again. Uh, I didn't quite see any amazing morph targets for the Morphling this game so far, but I have seen a bit of the Lena being morphed into. It can be quite nice with the Fiery Soul. Uh, AM, however, being picked up by Vice Esports, and I believe we saw this multiple times yesterday from them, uh, and it was performing very nicely. So they go back to that pickup, it seems to be a bit of a comfort pick here for Vice. Uh, well, I don't blame them. If, if this is the uh, if this is what they feel good on, they may as well just take it. I don't think it does too badly into the Morphling either, uh, especially if you can get through the mana pool of the Morphling. While he can Strength Morph, he is still a bit of a sitting duck. I, I suppose even against the Slaughter Phoenix Lane, John, it, it, while you can kind of get bashed for a while, you are always going to have that Blink available to just try and Try and get away if you do lose a bit too much HP. Yeah, um, that's going to be a pretty decent back and forth for the AM. There's still a window of opportunity there for Fnatic to bully it out. Um, AM, level 1 to 3, are kind of lackluster. Uh, very vulnerable to the damage that Fnatic can pump out. So we'll have to see if they're going to opt for that more aggressive posturing here in Fnatic's end. The Morphling, as you mentioned, not the best targets in the world to morph into here. But... It does have a lot of utility still. It's just a very safe bet to pick up. Vice Esports does not have a natural urn carrier. I suppose in this case, you might see the Lena pick it up on the four, but doesn't feel like a very comfy pick for Lena. Potentially waiting for our Damn, Bob hero, so unless he plays the Magnus, to take that role and just having a casual five, spirit seven, vessel carrier to take care of the morph. Um, Fnatic for their part. They've, they've got some decent team fight coming through, right? Slaughter Phoenix, we've been talking about for a while. Um, really have to see what they want down mid for Moon. Uh, just something to give them a little bit more tempo. The Leshrac was banned out earlier on, so they don't have that option. But you want something quick here. Uh, perhaps looking at uh, Void Spirit could slide through for them, as it has been left in the pool. So they could just slip in and out. Um, we've seen Moon play that before. Does tend to deliver a very solid performance as well. If they want that, so it could be an option for Fnatic to, to close it out. They do have last pick overall as well, so they can kind of sneak something through, and Vice is going to have to show us what exactly they want to do with their Magnus AM, what lanes they want to run this Magnus in specifically. No, I do agree with that. I mean, Second. the Ember would have definitely been nice, but of course Vice got rid of it straight off the bat, and you, you also saw the Kunkka being removed, just not wanting those kind of direct counters towards the Anti-Mage. Uh, we'll see if he does go down the Voice Spirit route, or maybe even a Puck route. Does seem kind of decent here into the Anti-Mage and even the Magnus. Uh, Vice Esports, though, they'll be the ones to make their first pick. It is, gonna, is it going to be a mid-mag? Are they going to throw it in the offlane and get something else is the question right now. And In all fairness, I don't believe we've seen Bob play the mid-mag quite as mm -hmm. yet, so I'm kind of guessing that they're probably going to go for something a little bit different here uh, for Bob. Uh, the Magnus might be a little bit too slow in that uh, position 2 role, especially when you've got the Anti-Mage there, who is going to try and take as much farm priority as possible. And they do go for the Bat Rider, who I imagine is probably going to be mid, or they just mix it up depending on what the lanes look like. And Fnatic now, up against that Bat Rider, I wonder what they pick up, because there's not really many heroes that beat the Bat Rider in the mid lane, and unfortunately for them, they did get rid of the LC themselves. So they aren't going to yeah. have that Legion Commander to go to. Five, yeah, not many options in terms of a core to deal with a bat. Um, the Abaddon's there, but you don't really want to run Abaddon down mid. They will have to just go for the Ricky. So it looks like we're seeing the Moon Morphling come out here potentially, or uh, unsure how they do it. No, it's a Raven Morphling still. Moon on the Ricky, so probably Raven down mid um, to deal with a bat rider, or Moon on the Ricky against the bat. I feel like we've seen bat against Ricky. I can't really recall if that's something you want to run to Ricky on. I'd say no, but 
Ricky has surprised us a couple of times. We'll have to see what Fnatic brings out. Rather interesting way to close out the draft, but that silence from the Ricky is one way to really ruin the Heroes of Vice, right? Like the AM does not like that AoE silence. Definitely depends on the blink to get out of there. Manta Salt's not going to help for the most part. So you're going to get a lot of value from Moon jumping onto Palos, preventing the AM from being mobile. And that in itself could be exactly what Fnatic needs. So really interesting drafts again, very different from what we're used to seeing. But it should make for an interesting game as both teams do have some very, very different play styles coming out here. Yeah. We'll see how this pans out. Game number one, of course, again, Fnatic and Vice Esports. Both of them really would like to get a 2-0 victory here. A draw would also be nice, but, you know, you'd rather not if you can avoid it. Mm. And uh, both teams, I mean, Vice is kind of fighting to just get out of this tiebreaker. I believe they still do have somewhat of a chance to make it through to the upper bracket of the playoffs, but that would mean they have to get a 2-0 victory, and they would have to kind of hope that the other teams do not, uh, do not do too well later on. So we'll see how this all pans out. Uh, Fnatic, again, they are just trying to secure their upper bracket slot and maybe even take the second place spot uh, if they can. Uh, we're going to find out if they can right now as game one has begun. For the main event. And overall, I mean, I never really asked you to confirm this, but did you prefer the Vice draft or did you prefer the Fnatic draft? Uh, it's a bit tricky. I think uh, I'm going to have to see how Moon does in the Ricky mid against the bat. Like, if, if he can hold out, slow down the bat, then you've suddenly got two cores on the side of Vice that really need to build up fast. Like, we've seen offlane Magnus fall flat when you're just kind of stuck with a Guardian Greaves. No option for the blink. Uh, definitely no Echo Saber down the line if you are going for that utility build. So it, it all kind of hangs on how well Bob can do on the Bat Rider, which means for Fnatic's end, it relies on how much Moon can apply pressure onto Bat. So I think it's rather even outside of that. You've got good timings on the AM. But the Morphling, if you decide to drag it long with the Ricky on the pool, can kind of strangle the AM. It's always going to be about that smoke screen on the AM until some four staffs are up on your supports or maybe even on the Bat Rider. The AM is going to be a, a stuck target there, especially if you find something like an Atos down the line as well. So Palos is going to have to watch himself in this game, um, really watch how far forward he goes and really try to farm as fast as possible with Empower. He's going fairly far forward now, right into Jabs, in fact. He's going to try and fight out for this bounty rune, but Jabs proves to be the faster clicker out of the two. Now, Palos will just get himself out. However, DJ top lane might just be dead here. Samael has the Light Strike array, and they do manage to get the first blood. And that's one thing about Vice Esports that we've learned over the past couple days, John. They love to fight extremely early. And they will go for these first blood plays pretty much every game. Yeah, it really sets them up really nicely as well, right? You get a nice amount of gold being split up here for Enryu. He gets a little bit of an EXP boost. Key thing is that Samael on his Lina. And he's done so much work on his Lina. Just getting that first blood means he gets to ferry out some additional regen. Get some zoning off. DJ on the clock already trying to gap close. But with the boots up on Samael, you're not going to gap close that easily. And... Of course, you have to remember the Lina has insane range. So this is not going to be a very easy lane for Fnatic. Going to have to watch themselves here. At the least, Raven shouldn't be under threat until perhaps level 2 or level 3 comes out for Enryu and Samael. But by then, he should have enough levels in the shift to really start to mitigate a lot of that damage. I really like the decision made here by Samael, John. He goes for the brown boots very early on to make sure that DJ can't really keep up on the clockwork. That's one way you can kind of just make sure the clock has really no effectiveness in this lane. It's just make sure the support can't get caught out by the battery assault and just die. Of course, he is still going to have to be somewhat concerned about the cogs that do come out of DJ, but that's assuming DJ is able to land those cogs, which, again, is going to be fairly hard if you can't really keep up with the movement speed of the leaner. No. He's going to be fairly exactly. behind that. But bot lane, Zenki is going to go down. Maseros able to pick up the kill. I'm not sure how Zenki got that far down, but he does end up dying. It was a close call. He was right outside melee range, but of course with orb walking, with how it is in Dota with melee attacks, Masra is hit from a mile away. It looked like 300 units away. 
which is an <laughs> interesting definition of melee. Still, this bot lane for Fnatic going solidly. You talked, you know, the combination of the Slaughter plus Phoenix is fairly strong. This is a slightly slower start for AM. You don't really want to cop too many stuns and damage, but he is getting control here. He is. Palos going to be in a spot of trouble, but with the Frost Shield, looks like he is going to be fairly safe. Zenki going to just make sure he has that available every single time to just ensure Palos can get away. But like we kind of talked about in the drafting stage, it's definitely not going to be a very easy lane for Palos. Even if you are playing the AM and you can drain the mana of Maseros, it's the Bash of the Deeps you're going to have to be very worried about. And of course, even with the Fire Spirits out from Jabs, sure you get some magic resist with the counter spell, but it still does add up and it does get a little bit painful here for Palos as time goes on. And it's not like he's gone for the passive regen kind of build either. He has just gone for the double Wraith Band build. So he's not going to have that passive regen coming in every so often to just keep him alive as uh, they go again. Looks like he'll be fine, but mid lane, Moon dropping very low and even top lane. DJ dropping extremely low now on the clockwork. Samael might be in trouble, however, and does actually end up going down first. Raven able to clean up the Lena kill. It looks like he does even lose his Kuri in the meantime. Meanwhile, Moon and Bob oh, go what? down, but Moon... All so, right. uh, Moon dies. Does get the kill on Bob straight after he dies. I guess the tower got him and buys back. I... It looks like he really wanted that range creep. I, I don't know if that's a net positive in terms of EXP. He's still going to be behind this Bat Rider. And again, boils down to this lane. Ricky versus Bat. It's not a totally lost lane for Ricky, but it's really just not an easy lane at all. Right? There are some ways to play it. You keep playing with your Blink Strike, trying uh -oh. to get last hits. Oh, he, he might die back, John. Yeah, Bob knows. He's going to chase him down to the ends of the earth for this. Kong's going to come out. DJ trying to desperately keep him alive, Moon. Tricks of the trade. I just can't see him surviving. Oh. Yeah, he'll go down. A dieback. Bob going to give him the tip straight off the bat. And Bob is going to be a full level and a half ahead of Moon now on that Ricky. And he is down for 40 seconds. This is an absolute disaster for Fnatic. Right. I, I, I don't know what was up with that. Like, I, I get the creep wave was under there, but he really risked a lot playing for that rune as well. And... Giving Bob this kind of start, we've seen it before. When Bob gets off to a running start, he delivers for his team. He buys that space out. And it is one of the conditions for Vice. Like, this Batrider needs to be the space maker. You need to buy that space for the AM and for the Magnus even to get up to a running start. And so far, Bob is set to have that good start. Uh, once he hits 6, he might look for an opportunity to kill. More than likely, just accelerate his farm with the added levels. But... This lane for Moon, it's a really slow lane. He's either going to need to get some help or just find some farm elsewhere as you can't really lane against a bad rider at this point. No, you can't. I mean, he's going to have Lasso up. It's uh, As soon as Moon shows himself, he's probably just going to die. And, uh, we'll see what Moon does get done here. It looks like he has gone to the neutrals on the side. He'll just try to take advantage of that instead. You can see Zenki even rotating in into the mid lane. See what's going on. See if he can catch out Moon on that Ricky. Get some wards down as well. Just defensively here for the Bat Rider. But I mean, yeah, this Ricky, he, he's kind of just stuck. Waiting around now for the Creep Wave to be underneath this Tier 1 tower. And even then, he's not safe. Like, there's just so many heroes coming into the mid lane. Bob is going to smoke up now with Zenki. They're going to try and sneak up from behind a Moon. He should not know this is happening. He has no Blink Strike targets either. He's going to get lassoed up and he's probably going to die. Oh, Vice, they're just playing this so well. They are really playing this perfectly. They are. The rotation's really paying off. Um, they're finding pretty decent wins across their lanes. The one lane that went slow was Palace's lane. But given some space mid, it is nice, although he's copping some damage here. Yeah, Jabs trying to get some uh, damage out, does get the kill, and Jabs will give him the tip. Now on to Zanki he goes. With this haste rune, getting a lot of damage off now, Moon gonna blink strike in, and with the tricks of the trade, perhaps they kill him off, and they do. Bob is gonna TP back into the mid lane with the flame break, going after Jabs, but Jabs has the Icarus dive out of there, and he is gonna be fine. And so they do kind of get a bit of revenge in that mid lane, especially by killing Palos on the AM. It's still uh, looking pretty darn good for Vice, but Fnatic, they do claw their way back a little bit. Yeah, they they are getting the right targets out. And that is something that Vice is really slowing down on. Like, 
They do have some decent farm in Enryu, not too far behind Raven in that lane, so our Magnus has been keeping up well. Masters has completely taken over the bot lane, though, and that's where you can really see how far Palos is. 15 to 3 in last hits. He's going to need a lot of stacks coming in. He's going to need his Magnus to stick next to him with Empower. Otherwise, the Battle Fury timing for Palos is not going to look too well. So Vice needs to protect their aim a bit better. They are just trying to have Palos lane against Moon to get some manageable farm, but Moon level 5 now is starting to feel a bit comfier in that lane, so yeah, you still really have to keep an eye out on your AM and have some TPs ready in case he does get jumped. Yeah, I mean, in all fairness to Moon, the Batrider matchup is extremely hard as a Ricky. So, uh, so he did the pro probably the best he could there just to try and be able to survive and get as much as he can, but he is definitely in catch-up mode now. So he is uh, def desperately wanting that level 6 and 7 to be able to get active with his team. Meanwhile, DJ having a look at Enryu here up at that top lane, but I don't believe there's too much DJ can do here to, to slow Enryu down. It is a bit too late for that, and Enryu can always just skewer away if he needs to. It looks like he's just going to be fine to pull the creep wave away and just farm that up. DJ now going to try for the battery assault, trying to force out the skewer from Enryu, but Enryu not using it yet. Oh. Now does bring in DJ along, but he just wants to get out of there. He doesn't want to bar of this clockwork. Samael, he tried to get a bit more damage out onto DJ, but it wasn't going to be enough to kill him off. So DJ now, just walk off and he'll be within safety's range. However, bot lane, looks like Jabs is going to make a jump onto Bob. Bob going to be all right for now. The gaze is going to be there from Zenki, trying to hold Maseros down, but the bash does come in from Maseros. He gets Bob into Zenki now. There's not really much this Lich can do to survive and he is going to die. Jabs and Maseros really just turning this game around for Fnatic. If you're finding some big wins with those kills, uh, Vice over, overstepping a bit with Bob, just feeling a bit too confident. He was looking for the bait with the lasso under tower. Um, doesn't have the turn rate to really maximize it. Slaughter just gets that hit off. So a bit reckless from Vice. Really good pickups there from Fnatic. They take the lead now as well. 3k up in that word. That gap we were talking about with Raven on his morph having a free lane, it's really growing wider. Like, Enryu is trying to keep up pace, but this is basically a free farm lane for Raven. And we've seen Raven get this kind of start before. If you leave him alone, it's going to be hard to deal with him down the line. They drag Bob up, but this is not going to be an easy jump in onto the Morph. Bob, he might be in danger right now. DJ going in for a battery assault, but Cogs are out as well. They're trying to kill off DJ, and they will. Looks like they thought Bob may have been alone there on the Batrider, but that was not the case. And They'll take themselves a pause 5 kill. Jabs and Raven, they were around, but I, I don't think they really want to try and force a team fight here. It is a bit too early for the Morphling to get this involved in fighting. So instead, Jabs is going to have to try and make a run for it. Meanwhile, Bob does have Lasso up and might go for an attempt onto Jabs with the Flame Grape. It's still not enough damage, and now Bob might be in danger. Moon comes in, the Batrider in trouble, and they will get the kill. Moon very happy to pick that one up, and Jabs will remind Bob... <laughs> that he did tip Moon earlier on. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're definitely starting to get some punishment out here on Fnatic's end. Vice, though, they're using the space pretty nicely. They're giving Palos a lot of room to farm up. Still has a lot of catch-up to play through, but he is going for this switch up in the AM build. It's, you know, reminiscent of the God King build, Mask of Madness coming true first into the power treads. So he is just going to try to farm efficiently with the Empower. Every time the Magnus is around, this is one way for the AM to catch up. We'll see if Palos is given that space. Vice needs to start playing together, maybe even just getting an RP on one while they can. And while Fnatic's not really grouping up this five, uh, we have seen Jabs not be too scared of dropping the egg. Same thing needs to come out here from Enryu. You know, he needs to be pretty fearless when he drops the RP. Just going for an early kill at this point in the game doesn't hurt your team's chances at all. Absolutely not. And there's that Mask of Madness now popping up on the AM, but Moon now getting active on that Ricky. Wants to try and have a go here onto the AM. They do not have smoke screen, so there's not really a chance of this death happening. Enryu is also around with the RP, but they are not going to commit. They'll let Moon Blink strike out. They don't really want to risk wasting that RP this early on. 
Uh, Bob now going to get spotted. A lot of TPs coming in. They really want this kill. They are not happy with Bob this game. And he does get hookshot by DJ, but he's going to go for a run. But Raven will come in to clean up with the waveform. And it looks like Bob might have a target on his back in game number one. I mean, he, he did seem fairly happy about mid. Bob is also putting himself in the line of trouble here. He's just always on the opposite side of the map. No teammates to back him up cleanly. Fnatic are just finding that weakness and really punishing him. It feels like Vice is not as coordinated. Oh, Enryu going for a skewer back. Moon going to pop the tricks of the trade now. And Enryu is going to take a fair bit of damage, but is going to be able to back out. But Fnatic, they are feeling very, very confident with this lead now. 4k net worth for game number one so far at 12 and a half minutes in. Now they do get a lot of damage out onto that tier 1 mid tower before they do decide to back off. And it seems like Fnatic's game plan is to not really allow the space for this anti-mage this game as now they jump in into the Radiant Triangle. Lasso is there from Bob onto DJ. He should tick out and will RP and Ryu not throwing it out quite yet. Moon going to jump back in onto the Magnus. Getting him pretty darn low. On the side, Samael going to be in trouble. He gets the Laguna off, but Raven is going to be able to survive through it. And Maseros is the one to take the kill. So one for one in the end on supports. Bob still moving in, but Moon is around the corner, just ready to pounce. Now Zenki going to be there to just frost shield him up and make sure he survives. They are looking down jabs, however Moon going to jump back in with the Chain Frost now. Coming up from Zenki, but it's not going to be enough. Raven even jumping in with the Adaptive Strike, and it's a perfect bait out from jabs. Just baiting the side of Vice back oh, in, in fact mid lane now. Palos going to be in trouble. He does have the Blink Strike, however Raven has morphed into the AM. Going to go back into Palos. Now Enry you're going to be targeted. He has the RP, but is he going to commit it to try and survive? Raven's not giving up. There's the RP coming out, but it looks like he is going to tick out. Adaptive Strike comes out, and they do get the kill. In fact, they found another Samael also going to drop. And Fnatic, a 6-15 to 15 lead now, 6k net worth lead. They are looking very, very good, and Moon's not done. He's continuing to just stalk Palos here. Looks like he realizes, though, he can't really kill the AM by himself, especially without Smokescreen or the Diffusal Blade. So he's just going to back off and just keep eyes on what this AM's doing. In fact, never mind, he is going to make the jump. Just be very annoying towards Palos. Yeah, it's been a really messy time. They're just all over the map now, Fnatic. Getting the punishment off, they find another kill onto Bob. We've seen our Batrider really stall out here. He's got the travels, but doesn't have an easy way to reach into the back line again. They're going to need a blink on either the Magnus or the Batrider down the line if they want to kill off the back because Fnatic's been very disciplined in keeping DJ and Jabs at back, and they smoke up again. Oh, they do. Raven's got a DD rune active right now, so Maseros is going to go straight in. Hookshot doesn't actually land on the AM, so they miss out on the kill. They'll try for Enryu, but it looks like he's going to be just fine to walk out, or maybe not. He made a back step. The Light Strike Raid does come in with the Chain Frost, however. It's a lot of damage coming up at Raven. He waveforms out. Meanwhile, Maseros does die, but Jabs will get the trade onto Enryu. And now Bob going to try and make the chase. Onto this Phoenix with the lasso out. He might just have an upper jabs. He does have the egg. The egg should be taken out, however. And it looks like Zenki is going to be there to help out in making sure it does die. And ultimately, Vice Esports will get the better side of that trade. That's a pretty nice win for Vice. Not the biggest here to take out, but it's still a solid gold injection their way. Um, they do manage to barely save Palos. Uh, unfortunate for DJ, his hook shot was blocked by, I believe it was Raven blocking away, so not quite the coordination you'd want, but you've still got a massive lead here on the side of Fnatic uh, Moon. Oh, oh very close. If he had vision. Oof. He had the skewer. He had it for maybe 0.1 of a second, but it wasn't long enough. Uh, Bob, really playing around with Maseros here. He might end up killing himself, and he does. He thought he was safe because of that sentry ward, but it's night time, so he could not see Moon coming in. And of course, the Blink Strike range is fairly long, even without the Blink Strike talent up yet. And even uh, Masteros just keeps going. Samayo now going to go down. DJ, meanwhile, hooking into the Lich, and they're going to find Zenki. All off the back of Masteros once again. He is just doing a lot of work on the slaughter with a blink. All he has is that blink and the hood of defiance. That's enough for him to stand in the front, get the control off. 
Fnatic are playing really well with that power spike they've gotten from the Slaughter. They immediately divert towards Roshan as well. Gonna be a very nice and fast Rosh. I believe that was probably spotted out by the ward, but Vice just don't have any easy way of contesting the Roshan right now. Well, it's gonna be a nice easy Roshan out for Fnatic, especially with the Sun Raider come in from Jabs to make sure everyone stays healthy. Fnatic, they are looking very strong today in this game number one. Zanke, you're going to have to be a little bit careful. Over in that triangles, they do spot him de-warding, but looks like he is probably going to get away with it. While that Roshan was happening, Palos ended up getting that bottom tier one tower, so they got something for their trouble, but they need some help right now, because Maseros, he's not done. He wants to go after Bob. Meanwhile, an RP is committed, but it's only on to Jabs. Lasso is going to be there on to Maseros. He's been cliffed, but Moon is going to come in on to Bob. And Maseros will be able to TP out. Now Moon jumping back in, looking for more. Enry, you're going to go down to Jabs by himself. Samael trying to run, but he cannot. He will die to the sun. That is Jabs. And now Zenki just trying to get out of there on the Lich. Looks like he is going to have to pop a smoke just to be safe. But Vice Esports losing another three heroes. This is a very rough time for them. It's not looking clean at all. Fnatic are just all over the place, really building off the back of Masra's just enabled to be in the front. Like, there's nothing that can damage him with this very early pipe of insight already completed. The damage from Vice right now is mainly magical. It's all relying on Lina, relying on Lich, the Batrider, to get some stacks up with the Napalm. And they're, they're just not able to break off that initiation. Uh, Vice need to wait for that blink to come out. We're seeing Bob queue it up. Just about 400, 500 gold off. Once you have that blink on the Batrider, you can at least hunt for one. Ideally, you'd get this blink as well on Enryu, but the map is shrinking. It's a really small map now, not very safe to farm up. They are prioritizing Palos as you'd tend to. Even then, his farm's just not quick. He's still number three in net worth, right, right behind Maseros, but everyone else is taking huge hits because of that. Oh, Palos in trouble. Maseros again with the stun out and the smoke screen there from Moon and Palos is going to tie onto Enryu, they go, and poor old Enryu just can't sustain the damage. Just great coordination out from Fnatic this game one. Onto Zenki now, the clumsy net out from Jabs. Poor old Zenki is going to die, and Masteros just dives behind. Onto Samael, and Raven going to come in for the final attack. And this is probably the best coordination we've seen out of Fnatic throughout the group stages, John. I'd have to say it really is. It, it's very nice. It, it really is. Like, they're all on point. They're coordinating well with the jumps in. Masaru seems to be taking command of his team along with Moon this time around. They're just finding these opportunities, blowing holds open in the defense of Vice. And Vice, for their part, they're lagging way too far behind the farm. Although Lasso is there onto the slaughter. They really want to get rid of this pesky guy, but RP, can he be committed? They want to make sure he dies. Message has been sent from Vice. They know who the real big problem is in these team fights. And who's really starting every team fight. Bob now gonna find an arcane room, but DJ will not actually take it. He does give it over to Bob and Moon. He's gonna jump in with the smoke screen. Now Enry Yu gonna catch him out with the, the gaze out from the Lich, but the tricks of the trade is there. Waveform in. Zenki gonna die. Moon somehow still alive, but does get Laguna down. Will still respawn with the Ages. They still found two for nothing. Enry, you're trying to run, but the skewer away from Raven. Gonna cancel the TP off, and they get a third kill for themselves. And poor old Bob, all he can do is just creep skip the mid lane while he can with that Firefly, but that's literally all they can do. That, that was just way too deep. Like, after they found that one kill, they kept running down into the rune costs them they should have just been satisfied with that one kill they know they don't have rp they didn't have lasso it's a weak time for them to fight vice nicely punished once more by Fnatic. they did still manage to get some gold going i believe palos is at least somewhat ready to stand in front with amanta um he has a little bit more presence out this is not helping their overall state there they can't oh, find towers in the bot lane oh jabs found bob well, bob's gonna be okay 
Raven is going to be the one chased down, but he's going to back off to safety, and now they're just baiting Maseros around the corner. Lasso is going to be up, but the blink is there with the stun out from Maseros, but Maseros is getting low. They gaze him up, Palos on top, trying to take him down. He's trying to make a run for it. He's pretty darn fast, but Palos is eventually going to get the kill into jabs now, and Raven, they have not got an RP, but they're going to try and go for this anyway. DJ with the hook shot now, just dragging out Palos. Manavoid not going to do anything. Palos is going to die. Moon on a triple kill now on the Rick after Zenki perhaps and they will make the jump underneath the tier 2 tower Zenki has no chance of survival Raven will be the one to take that kill and they are onto the tier 2 tower now oh man it's I mean it's really nice that Vice is trying to find these angles now with the blink on their Batrider it's just not lining up it, like they knew there was a Phoenix around as well. They must have known there was going to be more backup. They tamped Faith. They get oh, two at least, but they might lose more. Yeah, they're definitely going to lose more. Henry, you're trying to run. He does have the RP, but he'll go for the skewer. Moon doesn't want to dive too deep. But now Bob's here. They don't have a lasso available, however. DJ going for the cogs and Moon with the smoke screen, but the Firefly burning him out, and the Dragon Slave what? is going to get the kill. I believe with the sticky napalm, John, he, he couldn't really get the turn in time to blink strike away. Which is why I believe he just kept fighting there. Now DJ racing Bob for a double damage room, but Raven, he wants that double damage himself. And speaking of Raven, by the way, John, he has an Eye of Scardi up now. Ooh, so many issues now for Vice. Even just contending with that Scardi, the slow it brings out, the mitigation in heals, which again, you do have this mech on Enryu, so taking away some of that effective healing is gonna hurt Vice and they need every single advantage they can get. Fnatic 12 to 35 here Mike, 15k up, just domination off the bat and this is Vice, this is the team that we have seen do a couple of upsets, this performance so far, honestly they're not playing bad, this is the exact same playstyle we're used to seeing from them, it's just Fnatic seems to know what they want to do. They seem to know how to punish Vice, punish their movements out. There is a smoke here, though. Oh, Palos. Find something? He would have loved that DD, but Moon is going to show himself. Dust is going to come out. They saw that. Moon wants to make the blink strike in. Sentry's being placed, but immediately dewatered as Maseros goes in. He found Palos. The smoke screen there. The RP not going to land on Moon. He'll just keep going. The tricks to the trade, but the blink strike is out of there from the AM still. The rest of the team going to be in massive, massive trouble. So they do lose two supports. Maseros going for a bit more now. He found Enryu. There is no skewer away this time around. And Maseros setting up a kill for DJ to take with the Rocket Flare. And it's just not going to slow down Moon. He still has that DD rune active. So he'll go and get some sweet, sweet revenge on poor old Bob. <laughs> oh. I'm sure Moon is behind his PC screen smiling right now, John. <laughs> That he would be after that little slip up down mid. Still Fnatic, they've got this opportunity to go high ground. No RP for a minute 20. Oh, Maseros. Is a lasso with a respawn though. Maseros? Trying to fight. Zenki goes down in the Radiant base. Maseros, can you survive this? Palos? He's not going to go for it. He does not want to deal with the Ricky. In fact, it was just DJ coming in. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, Samael also goes down. Raven picking up another kill on the Morphling. And there is just no space to be had for Vice Esports. Nowhere is safe. It, they've got no room to farm in. It's all down to Palos getting that split push game going. And that's the best you can hope for now from Vice. Maybe you find the blink eventually. I mean, they do have the blink on Enryu. It's that they need the opportunity to get the RP off. The damage is definitely lacking. It's just not there anymore with how far behind they are. They're going to need Palos to really finish up his own squad here. Um, get something else. I'd say you'd want a Basher Abyssal, more than likely, maybe even a BKB on the AM, just to ensure you can stand and fight without worrying about that smoke screen. But those are all way too far off, and Palace just always has to throw himself out in front in these waves to get some farm up. That they do. Jabs having a look at Zenki. Maseros thinking about jumping in, but there are there are plenty of heroes around. This could be very dangerous. Palos still just trying to get his own farm up. Almost has the Skyly up now on the AM, but how's Raven looking? He's almost got a butterfly up, so it's not like you're really going to be able to hit him once you've got that Eye of Skyly, which is going to be problematic. Meanwhile, Moon is going for a Basher. 
So it's going to be much, much more effective in making sure they lock down Mr. Palos on the AM. And speaking of effective, another effective thing is having a secondary life, and that Roshan will give them exactly that. It just doesn't last long. You've got the Curse of Haze, you've got some Jabs. damage coming through. Oh. Bot lane is not going to tie. Palos is still chasing Sunray Jabs. He'll get away from this. Palos, he's getting bashed up. He can't blink to Jabs, and Jabs will bait another one in. How does he do it, John? Oy. Every he game, is. Jabs, he just keeps baiting calls in. Now Bob's here. Bob's just dead. Ray, Moon says thank you very much for that. And uh, it's a 12 to 43. Yeah, it's, a, it's a slaughter. Vice just taken to the chopping board and... Well, it's going to be hard to recover the pieces here, Mike. Going to go on to those racks. Nothing to stop Raven. They need to find something here, Vice, but for the most part, without the RP, they just can't really fight well. You do, do again have Lasso with a respawn of Bob. But it does feel like it's just not enough. Even if you lock in one, it doesn't matter when you're 23k behind. They need multiple pickoffs to start winning here. They are getting some creep cuts out with Samuel at least on the bot lane. That's all you can really hope for, but it's not going to stop the push. One racks down. They're going for the secondary racks down to that bot lane. And of course, they can't aim for Megas anyway, as the tier 2 top tower is still standing for Vice Esports, but they'd love a secondary Rax. However, Enryu gets a skewer away and a double light strike array into the Chain Frost. It's a great start. Hookshot in is not gonna be good enough. Mana Void is a lot of damage as well, but Raven still going after that tier three. It's like DJ is gonna be left behind. Chaps is still there as well. He could not Icarus dive out in time. And that skewer play from Enryu proves to be very, very effective. Even getting a bit lucky there and finding two heroes into the light strike array and now Maceros is trying to run but Palos is going to have enough damage in enough time and they will be able to defend at least one lane of Rax. That's a pretty big defense coming out for Vice just the fact that they managed to get that working is already impressive in and of itself. Fnatic uh, gotta respect that Team fight potential coming in, just the relocation that Enryu can have. That is one of the strongest points of the Magnus, of course. Uh, the fact that RP Pierce is true and that Skewer can put you in a very awkward spot. So um, they still have a massive lead here in Fnatic's end, but that does give Vice a nice gold injection. Oh. Palos is already comfy with it. Yeah, thank you. He tried to uh, save his own life, Enryu. Oh, you missed the cliff as well. Raven wouldn't have cared anyway. He does have the wave form. It'll go after Bob now. Bob trying to run. Adaptive Strike is there, but they do get the Aegis. Still not too bad. It's now Palos going to be around. Zanki going to buy back on the Lich. They really would love to get this Morphling. And Raven has gone too far. Yep. We'll end up going down to Vice. And even with this net worth advantage, you do not want to underestimate the comeback potential of this draft from Vice. Though I say that, Moon's going to jump in on the Ricky now, going back after Palos. Gets a nice bash off. Maceros with the stun as well. Palos still going to be able to blink away. Very close call for him. Won't be enough from Fnatic. Nah, it's uh, still a really big pickup for Vice in the end. Finding this Morphling makes everything worthwhile. You are slowly chipping away that lead. It's still massive though, 17k up on Fnatic. But you're giving options here for your AM to get bigger. enry has got some room as well to start itemizing beyond just that blink and mech that he has. He's going to go for the four staff next again. Important to break heroes out of the smoke screen once you have that force staff. So that's going to give Vice another option to get out of that silence. And now for Vice, it's time to try to get your other cores farmed up. Bob saving up for his Yules, has his own force staff up. It's going to be important to have the Yules again. Save yourself, buy some time out. Um, Fnatic for their part, they are still building up. Like Moon is saving up for his nullifier. They just really need to stick as a team, get ready to back up Raven. He was fairly far out with no reinforcements nearby. So I think Fnatic just need to play as five. When you play as five, more than likely the chances of you being picked off are very low. And they still carry that huge lead. They've still got a lot of damage. They just need to be able to be within each other's reach here. They do. Smoke up, Vice. They want to try and have a crack. 
at the side of Fnatic, but there is a counter smoke here from Fnatic, and they're going to move right into each other. Smoke going to be broken on too. DJ going to show himself for a second, placing a ward there. But Maseros, he found the big target. He got Bob straight off the bat, and now Moon going straight after Samael. Can they get the bash off? DJ, a great hook shot in. Great coordination once again. Out from Moon and DJ. Into the mid lane, they spotted out Palos, but he is just creep skipping right now. And it looks like Fnatic are just going to try and ignore him. As they will go back towards that bot lane and try to clean up that second lane of Rax. Yeah, it's going to be very difficult to defend. No buybacks in those two heroes, so they're going to have to wait for the full response. There is an RP they could play with if they wanted to, but they just don't have the numbers. You can see Palos as well trying to cause some trouble, but he's spotted out here. That he is. Palos in big, big trouble. Smoke screen is there. They need some bashes here. Palos does have the blink and will get away, but Hookshot, not going to be there in time. He'll be all right. Meanwhile, the bot racks did end up going down to Raven and Maseros. And with that, it's only one lane of barracks left here for the side of Vices. Well, Palos, he's trying his best to get the farm up, John. He's not that far behind in net worth, but the rest of his team is just so far behind. Uh, I mean, they're all behind jabs on the Phoenix. It's a nasty spot when you're lagging behind that opposing pause. Four, Vice need to, need to split the farm up, but there's just no way. So all you can hope for is the itemization Palos is going for helps out. He is going for the butterfly to get himself some more damage. Not going to help him in hitting Raven, but we have seen... If Raven overextends, they do have some good magic damage still left, so they can still make work, although Bob. Yeah, Bob, he's trying to have a look here, see if he can find anyone. Palos, meanwhile, blinking in to the secret shop, getting that butterfly up, and Moon jumping straight in onto Bob, and Maseros does jump in for the stun. Now finding Zenki, the Lich in big trouble. Looks like he will die. Samael also going to go down. Ooh. A big RP up. Palos, does he have the damage output? He does not. The Mana Void will not be enough. They'll keep trying to fight this one out of the smoke screen, but it is not going to work out for them. They get cleaned up by Raven, who gets an ultra kill on the Morphling. And it was a good attempt, but there's no buybacks. They have to call the GG, and they will. And game one will go the way of Fnatic. Ooh, boy. Vice, they, they tried to make this AM work once, once again. They've been running it all day yesterday. Doesn't quite pay off this time around. They did have a good time early on. Bob was having an excellent time down mid against his Ricky mid, which we pointed out was going to be... The stress test for Fnatic, right? They needed to get Moon off to a running start. It looked bad when he bought back and then died back. But they managed to hold out. They won their side lanes. It was all down to Maseros and Jabs. Like, from that laning phase, with the huge power that Slaughter Phoenix had into the mid game, into the movements they were doing on the map, just setting up for the entire team. And I think Vice have to go back to the drawing board. They didn't change their playstyle, which was one of their strengths in the past few days. But... Fnatic seems to know how to punish this kind of run at you playstyle, and Vice need to reconsider what they want here. Maybe I some other course beyond that AMS. It really didn't pan out in this game. No, it did not. And of course, with that, we are going to go to a very short break. And after the break, we are going to have Fnatic versus Vice Esports game number two. Should be roughly about 10 minutes. It's MLP Dota and Fire. We'll see you all again very, very soon.